You guys, welcome back to the channel. Quick video today on the new Red Cat Ascent Fusion. I'm going to be checking the ESC settings on this Fusion motor. This is a Fusion RTR. Supposedly, it's a little bit different than the Fusion SE that is available aftermarket. I believe, as far as I know, the only difference is they don't give you an optional BEC setting that this just comes hardwired for 7.4 volts which is fine because that's what most people are going to run about anyway. So I don't have an issue with that, but I'm going to plug in the program box that comes with, I think I got this with a fusion pro that I have in another rig and I'm going to see if it works first of all, and then see what the ESC is set to out of the box on this and just see what kind of settings we have access to changing if we want to. So stay tuned guys. And uh, let's check this out. Okay, so for uh, typical with the, the Fusion is you just got to plug it into uh, the little program slot here on the power switch. And I believe it shows you, yes, the negative uh, goes toward, uh, I guess, the left side of the switch if you're looking, or under where the P is on program. So that's where the black wire should go. Plug that in there. I'm probably going to run my battery up front here. I'm not sure yet, but... Um, Plug the battery in, just set it back there for now. Let's turn it on and see what we get. Well, I mean, so, so far, uh, RPM, well, I mean, right off the bat, I don't think this program card is really showing the right information because one, this says RPM throttle matching. There is no value three on here. Um, Two lipo cell. I mean, I don't know if that's right. Three cutoff voltage. I'm going to take a quick peek in the manual for the Fusion and see if there is a an included Hobby Wing Fusion manual that will show us these actual parameters. I do have other program cards that maybe are going to match up with this better. It's odd. You would think a Fusion card would match up with this, but scrolling through here, we only have four items which is why most of this is probably different. So let me take a quick peek in the manual and um, just see what we got. But this is how we learn. I mean, why look in the manual first? This is, it's more exciting this way. Okay, so quick scan through the manual and they do actually list the parameters for the ESC setting here. So what we have, item one, so we are limited. Uh, they, they limited more on the Fusion RTR than what you get on the Fusion SE and especially the, the, the Pro. Well, I think Fusion SE and Pro might have the same options. I'm not positive on that. Uh, I only have the, the Pros. Yeah, because I'm cool. Uh, no, but it's, I just, the Pros were only thing available when I was buying Fusions uh, in the past. So the SE is still recently new. But anyway. Um, and you could, bu you could buy a pro on AliExpress for like 106 bucks at times. The last one I got was $106 and you just wait two weeks to get it. But anyway, um, what we have here, we do indeed only have four parameters we can change on here. The first is the LiPo cutoff voltage, which you have uh, three different values. Um, you have one is disabled, two is intermediate, three is high. It doesn't really list the voltage. I'm actually going to change mine. Oh, well, wait, hold on. That's odd. Let me double check this. Why do I have four different values for that okay. one? It's basically because I forgot to write low down on my um, cheat sheet here. Uh, so yeah, you have disabled, low, intermediate, high. It should be set to value three, which is intermediate. That's what it was out of the box. I'm going to leave it at that, assuming that voltage is probably, I don't know, 3.2. I'm not sure. I'd have to look in the man. I don't, I didn't see it listed as the actual voltage. It's just disabled, low, intermediate, high. Item two is um, motor rotation. Counterclockwise, clockwise. This is set to counterclockwise. We need to leave it for that. Um, drag brake force. So this is your ultimate drag brake value. You have disabled, one, two, three, four, five. Um, this is set to the value is four, but the because disabled is value one, this is actually set to three out of five. Um, so it's the middle. Now I know the Fusion has a killer drag brake, so I don't think on a rig this light you need anything stronger. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Uh, as far as I know, I think setting a drag brake higher is just going to use a little bit more battery when it might not be necessary. The motor is just really holding on much much stronger to keep itself from rotating when it's just using more power to do that and you might not need it you know, necessarily. So I'm gonna leave it set to number three, which is actually value four, just 
just to be confusing. Uh, so that's fine. And then you have drag break rate. So really the only things you're going to be interested in possibly tuning in terms of performance would be your drag break force and drag break rate. The force is the overall um, like strength of how it's going to hold. So if it, if you had a heavy, I don't know, if you do anything, make it heavier and it is rolling downhill, slight bit more than you want, just increase the force. The drag break rate is how quickly it engages that drag break when you let off the, the throttle. So when you let off the throttle, it immediately neutral is, is basically goes right into drag break. And if you have that set as high as possible, it's going to be like, boom, like drop an anchor immediately. And the truck's just going to like screech to a halt. Everything's going to lock up. And it could, if you're at full throttle and you just let off and you have it set to full high, it's probably going to do like a nose wheelie and flip over. Um, the lower you have that, of course, it engages it at a much slower rate. It's just like easing on the brakes, you know, like if your mom's in the car with you or if you're driving with hot coffee, you know, you just want to ease onto those brakes. That's, that would be like, you know, number one. So these, there is no disable on the drag brake rate. It's set to three, which again, it's, it's one through five. So that's middle of the road setting. Um, I'm going to leave it at that because I haven't driven this yet. And I don't really know that I want to change anything. So essentially I'm not changing anything. So just to kind of go through it again, we have cutoff voltage is your item one and uh, the value is three so it goes disable low intermediate high so this is set to intermediate um number two motor rotation you want it to be on one or your truck's gonna go backwards uh drag brake force again number value four is actually number three of your setting one through five so uh and then drag brake rate is also middle of the road number three and that's it. And again, this is the card for comes with the Fusion Pro, probably the Fusion SE, and you know it works. So if you have, I, chances are any Hobby Hobbywing program card is going to work. You just can't go according to the specs listed on here. You just look up in the manual. I'll throw up a picture on here just in case you guys don't want to be bothered doing that. And that's it. So I'm just going to leave this as is for now and go out and run it. And I think it's going to be more than fine. So just want to let you guys know and show you and just I want to, I was curious myself to see. So apparently this is um, a decent amount stripped down. You do not have access to um, punch levels. Uh, let's just go through here. What would be on here? You would normally have the RPM throttle matching, which is your FOC that you could enable or disable. I'm assuming it's enabled. Uh, and, and you just can't disable it, which is, uh, you know, certain rigs I don't like it on just for the simple fact that when you're filming a video, it makes it look like you're not able to drive it steady because the truck, it kind of surges because it wants to maintain that RPM. So when you crest a hill, like the motor might be under a load and the motor's doing its thing, providing enough torque to keep it consistent. When you crest the hill, the motors, the, the system, the ESC is automatically going to compensate for that less power and it slows. But sometimes you get a little like er, 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 before it settles down in the middle. And just for literally just for filming, it, it annoys me because it just it's noticeable and it, it takes away like the scale look of if you're trying to make it look like a real truck filming something, which I'm always trying to do, you, you know, whatever it's it doesn't work all that great so anyway if it's enabled um, it's fine uh, you know i think that's part of what's good about this system it does work really well i just don't necessarily like the way it looks anyway lipo cells auto 2s 3s it it's 3s you know just run it on 3s uh cutoff voltage we have uh esc thermal protection i'm sure they picked something and left it there you know set it there motor rotation we have bec voltage i know this is hardwired for 7.4 uh, that's fine. I wouldn't run it on six anyway. The only reason I would do six is if you had something else on here, like a light system or something that couldn't handle seven, four, but you could get away with a, uh, a separate little BEC. You can buy them really cheap. If you're running lighting, you can run it directly off of the, um, the balance leads on the battery. You could wire it into here and just run a separate BEC at six volts, whatever you want. You could always add something like that. It's not a big deal. Drag brake force. We have drag brake rate. We have max reverse force. Um, I, I don't know. I feel I got to plug it in and drive it. It feels like it's the same as forward. I hope it is. I don't like, I don't necessarily like limiting my reverse force in the ESC setting because then you have no, you got to go into your ESC setting if you want to change it. And who has this with them all the time? Once you get it dialed, it's fine. But I would rather if you have a more advanced controller where you can do like adjust your dual rate for reverse, or you can even program in 
a uh, like a curve for your forward or reverse. I would much rather have a curve for my reverse because one thing I notice if you're climbing something extremely steep and you see the truck start to flip backwards, you can hit it into reverse real quick and try to shoot the truck back enough so it brings the front end back down. If your reverse isn't fast enough, you can't keep up with, your wheels won't turn fast enough to, to outrun the front of the truck falling backwards. So that's one reason. And again, if you get in a jam and you need the wheel speed to get you hop yourself back out of something in reverse, I, I just like having full power in reverse as well. I just want it to engage slower. So I'll either add like throttle expo or a throttle curve, which is essentially the same thing, or adjust your dual rate if you can do separate dual rates forward and reverse. And that's just how I like to run it. It works better for me. And apparently, I don't know. I'm going to see. I don't know if this is preset to 50, 75. Um, let's just see real quick. Hold on. Just before I go here, I was going to say this is a short video, but let's turn on. Let's just see in terms of the, uh, the sound we get. So this is forward. Uh, it sounds exactly the same. So it seems to be set 100%. So I'm cool with that. Um, not a ton of wheel speed on this thing. But you get insane just the slowest of slow. You can count each tooth on the spur gear as it's turning. Um, but yeah, that's it. So that's it, guys. Uh, just wanted to make a quick video and show you if you're not familiar with the Fusion RTR, they do sell these separate. I don't know why you would buy this from Red Cat, though, because apparently it is stripped down com compared to the SE. And they're asking um, more money than the SE. I think I want to say this is around 100 bucks on Red, Red Cat's site. You can buy an SE for 75, 80 bucks. So I don't I don't really see why anyone would be buying this um, after the fact. It's awesome that it comes in a rig for 400 bucks. Really awesome. I, I really don't mind. The punch, who knows what it's set to. I, I, I don't know if it's set up high, if it's medium. Seems like they went with medium settings on this, so maybe they went with medium on the punch. Uh, we will probably never know unless some of the engineers at Red Cat want to give us that information. Um, but anyway, I really don't mind. It, it's, it's a great setup um, for an RTR. So that's it, guys. Hopefully it's helpful. If you have any other questions, um, definitely stay tuned. I'm going to be doing some stuff with this. I'm not going crazy with this truck. The whole point of the RTR is to kind of, it was a good deal. And it, it seems to be, have a lot of potential out of the box. And I don't want to invest a lot of money in it. 400 bucks out of the box. It works great. It's a, it's a cool, you know, extra truck. And uh, I'm not going to be doing a ton of this, but I just really a lot of fine tuning, trying to maximize all of the potential of this truck without really spending a lot of money. So stay tuned. If you want to see, I'm, I'm throwing some different inserts in here and I'm going to, I'll give you guys some info on wheel weights and things like that and, and things you can do. I'm going to go over the whole truck, see what's Loctited, see what needs Loctite, see what's loose, see what's flimsy and um, go from there. And then we'll get some running video if it stops raining soon. So that's it. Later, guys.